Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I am talking about inks for everyday use. Uh, so what does that mean? Well, fountain pen inks that I think are good for sort of professional use or, uh, you know, like just because of good everyday writing inks. Now a couple of criteria. Firstly, I think it should be a both professional but interesting colour. I think it should be an available and somewhat affordable ink. And then also, it has to perform well. So most of these inks I've either reviewed or I've used extensively and believe that they are good performers. So what did I consider for this? Well, to be honest, this guy. Most of you will be familiar with the big four color click pen. It's a pretty straightforward ballpoint pen. Four colors, black, red, blue, and green. Can buy it at your local grocery store or news agency. Been around for ages. Absolute classic. So I took this as my inspiration. I'm always with one of these. One of these is always in my backpack because it is just a handy pen. As I've said before, I'm not a fountain pen snob that I don't only just use fountain pens. I use all kinds of pens. Uh, and while there are better ball points and rollerballs than the big four click, four color click pen, I think that this serves a lot of purposes. And also things like the lanyard hole, all that sort of stuff. These are classics. So I was inspired by this. So what I've done is I have selected a black, a red, a green, and a couple of blues. Um, but, and what, what I've done is I've put them on two different kinds of paper and a bit of cardstock so we can have a look at them. I did not take the water resistance of the ink into account. That's going to be for a later video. Um, these are just colours that are everyday inks uh, that are great for these uses. I have three highly commended because I consider these to be my everyday writing colours in a lot of respects. So I'm going to get started now and uh, start with my highly commended, which are colours that are not on the big four colour click pen. What list of mine would be a list of inks without a purple ink? And for my everyday purple, I have selected Alexander Hamilton or Aubergine from Dea Trementis. This is a really interesting ink. Uh, it's got some lovely depth, a bit of sheen, lovely shading. Uh, it's nice and lubricated, so we actually get a really lovely writing experience. The performance isn't bad. And at about $25 a bottle Australian, it's on the more affordable side for uh, an ink. So let's look at it now. Starting with it on the Tolmore River, this is the 68 GSM Tolmore River paper, uh, as in the Bond Travel Gear Notebook, which is no longer made. But it's the Tolmore River we all know and love. As you can see, lovely wet colour, uh, nice bit of sheen sort of popping up occasionally. Rich and dark, and just writes really, really beautifully. Now we see it on Rhodia paper, uh, and you can see water resistance wise, a little bit is left behind. It's grayer, it's a slightly saturated ink, so it does move around a bit. Um, but once again, nice dark rich purple. Purple, not violet, in a lot, if, you, if you know what I mean. On the slightly dusty, muted side, but a beautiful purple. Next on the list for me would be a brown ink. Um, I really enjoy brown inks, um, and this one is Diamine Makassar. It is a rich chocolatey uh, brown uh, with a bit of sheen on it, as you can see there, not so shine, it's quite nice. Uh, and coming in at about $20 for the 80 ml bottle, it's a pretty good price. Nice and wet ink, uh, really good performance as you would expect from Diamine. So as you can see, it is a lovely warm brown. It's dark, it's rich, it's certainly dark enough for professional use, and I think it has a lot of personality still. It's not mistakable as a black ink. It is very much a brown, chocolatey, and particularly in the shading, you get lots of the nice uh, sort of warmth coming through. On the Rhodia, we see that shading once again. Low water resistance. Um, you could probably make some of it out, but that's not what this ink is about, but just a lovely, warm, rich, chocolate, brown colored ink. Uh, and as I said, this would be one of my choices. If I was putting together a four color click pen, I would absolutely consider a brown uh, ink in there. And my final highly recommended color. Now, anyone who's watched my cha channel or my Instagram or anything like that knows I love blue black and knows I'm particularly fond of this one. This is the Diamine 1864 blue black from the uh, 150th anniversary set. A little bit of red sheen, but just a lovely rich 
uh, blue black, which I think is a true blue black. It is a rich dark blue with those black shading tones, uh, which is what I consider to be a blue black, not an, a lighter blue like, say, the Pilot blue black or the Waterman blue black. This is a nice rich dark blue black. In Australia, uh, Dye Mine 1864 blue black retails for about $25 for the 40 ml bottle. So it's probably not one of the more expensive inks on this list, but it is a stunning performer. As you can see on the Tomo River, that rich warmth comes through, lots of the sheen popping up, beautiful gray shading, uh, just a really lovely sort of navy inspired blue black, I think, uh, and very traditional uh, color there. On the Rhodia, we see that it's not the most water resistant ink, um, but the performance is good. It holds together very nicely. Uh, there's no feathering and there's lack, most of these inks come up very well in terms of bleed and that as well. Um, but it's that warmth and that richness of color that I have really gone for. In fact, if you look at the three highly commended next to each other, that rich dark color is clearly something that I really appreciate in these inks. Now we come to the Bic for Click Pen colors. These are the standard colors that I think are really great for professional use. Most of them are dark, richer colors for this, but I think red needs to be an ink that stands out and a red that really pops on the page is Waterman Audacious Red. Aside from performance, one of the thing that's, things that's really great about the Waterman inks is firstly their availability. Worldwide, these are considered to be one of the most reliable brands of fountain pen ink, safe to use in vintage pens uh, and just easy inks to use and to clean. Uh, and at the price that they are, which in Australia is between sort of 15 and $17 a bottle, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. It's a really top ink, uh, and as you can see, it just pops on the page. On Tomo River, what we see is we see a bit of sheen, which is nice, but lots of nice shading, but it is a uniform red. So if you are correcting or highlighting, or hey, even if you are wanting to write something that just stands out, this is a really, really great ink. It's bright, it's vibrant, it's well saturated, and it performs really, really well. And we absolutely don't lose any of that vibrancy on the t Rhodia page here. Still nice and bright and red. You can see it alongside the blue black, just how much that ink pops on the page. Yes, super low water resistance, but in a way that also helps this ink in terms of use in vintage pens. It's not gonna do damage, it's not gonna stain. So Waterman Audacious Red, for me, the red that I turn to when I need something to stand out and pop. I'm going to admit I took a tiny bit of a uh, a tiny bit of leniency when I chose my green. I chose California Teal from Monteverde. So this is a, a green that runs slightly on the teal, aqua sort of end. But in the same way what I was going for with the audacious red from Waterman, I was keen to find an ink uh, that would stand out on the page, would never like be misconstrued for another color. This could never be a blue or anything. It is a very, very much a green. Um, and when you get some dark shading on it, it looks beautiful. So this can cross over into that world where you use it for everyday writing. It's not harsh on the eyes, but I think there's enough pop there for it to really stand out. In Australia, California Teal Ink retails for around $13 a bottle. Here on the Tomo River, we see why this ink is so popular. That beautiful, vibrant red sheen just looks absolutely glorious. It comes up in the writing. This is a wet writing sample, of course, but it does show up beautifully. The green is rich and vibrant and clean. It's just a beautiful ink and it performs so well. And Monteverde inks are lubricated so that they have and have uh, technology in them to allow them to be like light fast. And as I said, lubricated for you know good use in pens. And on Rhodia, we see, yes, a little lack of water resistance. You're not gonna get a lot left out of this ink, but it is a beautiful green teal. It looks more green on this paper, uh, less teal, uh, which is one of the reasons I love it. This is closer to the paper you would use in an office situation. Tomo River is very fountain pen friendly. Rhodia is as well, but it's a step closer uh, and it performs well. This ink uh, for me is a great ink because it's while it's wet, it doesn't bleed or feather at all. It just holds together and writes so beautifully. When it came to black, I 
was torn. I have to admit this. There were a couple of blacks I could have put on this list, but black is black in my opinion. Uh, and while some, not all blacks are made equal, some are blacker than others, this could have gone to Pelican 4001, which is a really reasonably priced ink, but a little bit dry. It could have gone to some of the Noodler's inks, but they can sometimes have some issues in pens. What I went with was an absolute classic standard black, and that is Lamy Black. Now, Lamy sometimes sort of gets a little bit overlooked in terms of some of its standard inks. A lot of people think of things like Dark Lilac and Petrol as these amazing sort of special edition inks. Even the Turquoise uh, gets a lot of, you know, a lot of good praise. But I think Lamy Black is actually a really great everyday writing black. When it's laid down strong enough, you do get a bit of sheen, but that's not the reason why I chose it. It's not water resistant. That's not also not why I chose it. I chose this because, firstly, the price at around $20 a bottle for 50 mils, you're getting a lot of ink for a pretty reasonable price. And it's available everywhere. For me, black is kind of like that standard writing ink that most people will go for. And available in cartridges that are proprietary to Lamy, and also two sizes of bottle, I think it's 30 and 50 mil bottles, and a good solid performing ink that uh, performs well and works nicely in a lot of pens. So here on the Tomo River, we are really hit with that uh, sheen there, uh, which is lovely. I'm never gonna complain about that. Although sheen's not my thing, I think it's a nice attribute for people that really love it. But you can see it's nice and rich. It's got, it's dark, it's clear, it's got good contrast on the white paper. There is a hit of gray in some of the lighter shading, but I don't see that, you can see that sort of through the, sw the swipe there, the wetness swipe, uh, but I don't think that's a problem because you don't really see that in a lot of pens, even like the fine alarmy pens that you could put this in tend to actually perform pretty well. On Rhodia, it stands up. Like, yes, there is gray shading there, but you're gonna get that with a lot of blacks. And in fact, I, th I generally tend to find that more with blacks like the Pelican 4001. Uh, there is a tiny bit of water resistance. You do move the ink around. This is, water resistance does not mean permanent. Um, water resistance means that there is gonna be a little bit of resistance. If you get the page wet, you will be able to save something. And I think that you are capable of saving something with this ink. Now we come to blue. Now for me, blue is like that standard color, writing color. The majority of ballpoint pens that are produced are blue. When you buy a Lamy pen, you get a blue cartridge. So for me, blue was something that I was very keen to and took a lot of thought in. And what I couldn't do was separate three kinds of blue. Um, and so what I've done is I've chosen three that are different because I think it's actually important in this context. The three I have chosen are a very standard blue. Waterman Serenity Blue. Once again, Waterman, so it's safe, it's available everywhere. Really, really great ink. The next one I have chosen is a lighter blue, uh, which shades nice and dark. It is Robert Oster School Blue. This ink is actually kind of amazing. It's got a lot of depth. Different pens will show it very differently, but it's got a lot of personality and pop on the page. And then the last ink I chose is actually probably my favorite ink and my everyday writing ink, uh, and that is Diamine Oxford Blue. This is a dark, rich navy uh, blue, and uh, in some pens can appear to be almost a blue-black. You can see some of these darker blue shading through, happening through there. It is a rich, dark ink, and it's an ink uh, that I really, really enjoy the shading of. I have all three of them here on the Tomo River page. You can see how bright and blue that Waterman Blue is. Uh, it's a royal blue, truly. It's named Serenity Blue, but I think there's a lot of br uh, brightness to that. Robert Oster School Blue looks dusty blue on this paper, which is really interesting. And I think part of its appeal uh, is that it has these depths of color that Robert does blues very, very well, and none of them are boring. Uh, and this certainly is not boring. Those lighter shades are beautiful and blue, uh, vibrant blue, darker, dusty shades are really nice. And then you see Diamond Oxford Blue just is warm and rich. Once again, if we're looking at those earlier uh, inks that I showed, you know, the Diamine 1864 Blue Black or Diamine Makassar there for the brown, rich warm colors are very much my palette. And now if we look at them on Rhodia, a lot of those same color uh, attributes still really sing through. They all perform well as well. They look great on the page. They're rich and dark and they, or vibrant at least, and you know, well-saturated inks, 
which I think is super important. The Waterman and the Robert Oster do clean very well. Diamine is a more saturated ink, so it does take a little bit more to clean it out, but it does not stain. In terms of water resistance, Diamine Oxford Blue being that darker ink, you just get a little bit more of that grey blue left behind. Robert Oster disappears, and the Waterman Serenity Blue is technically a washable blue, uh, but there is a little bit of water resistance there on paper. So they were my choices when recreating what I would put if I had a four-click fountain pen. Now there's an idea. Um, everyday writing inks that uh, range from sort of the more unusual choices like that aren't on there, the uh, Datramentous Alexander uh, Hamilton, uh, the Diamine Makassar, or the 1864 blue black from, uh, you know, as I said, from Diamine, um, through to the standard sort of uh, click pen colours, a wonderful, rich, vibrant, poppy red in Waterman Audacious Red, um, a nice, rich, but, you know, well-meaning green in the California teal, a solid black that performs well, that stands up, Lamy Black. And then three blues, so you can choose a blue that fits your personality. If you want something really rock solid and you know reliable in the Waterman Serenity Blue, something a little bit more, a little bit more personality and some colour in the uh, Robert Oster School Blue, or something nice, rich and dark in Diamine Oxford Blue. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at the underscore offstage underscore me, or you can contact me on any of my videos here or drop me an email, which is listed down below. If you've got products you think I should be looking at, or if there's a way you'd like to support the channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review, I would love to hear from you. In the meantime, enjoy your inks, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.